Thanks, hi everybody. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, good to be here. Uh, my name is Rob Brouwers. Um, I'm uh, a tech lead at Eneco. Um, I'm responsible for the Kafka platform. Um, and I'm also involved in lots of other integration platform related uh, things. Um, I've been with Eneco since 2019. Um, and I was actually brought in with Eneco with this assignment. Uh, onboarding Kafka and making it a platform. So, uh, uh, yeah, so it was a long time ago already, four and a half years, uh, but time flew by and uh, I'm happy to share some experiences with you. Um, I'm, I have a background in consulting, so I'm more like an integration consultant from uh, 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 since 2002. Um, so a lot of in, uh, experience with integration technology, uh, things like TIPCO, I don't know if, if that rings a bell to, uh, to people here. So there's big middleware kind of things. But uh, yeah, I was happy to actually uh, learn a lot about Kafka uh, uh, at Eneco. And uh, uh, today I will share you with, uh, with you some, uh, some experiences. Um, I have this nice thing here. Let's use it. Uh, so... Uh, what am I going to talk about? Um, I prepared, uh, I, I, uh, I looked at, okay, what kind of use case do we have and what did we bring Kafka in for, right? So one of the main use cases I will be talking about is a virtual power plant, but also I will touch upon some other things. Um, uh, I will talk about data, uh, what I think, what we think that uh, we need from data, what data will bring us and uh, how we need to, uh, how we want to make it available in the organization. And because, of course, as mentioned already by uh, Jeroen, there's a lot of data going around. Huh? Data is uh, it's more data, it's faster, etc. cetera. So uh, uh, that has should, should have demands on our IT as well, on our platforms. Um, so uh, a little bit about where, uh, where we came from as well. So a little bit of history and where we are going, so it's sort of like a vision as well. And of course, there's also a little bit under the hood, what's our setup like, uh, what are we doing with it, um, organization-wise, but also IT-wise, and uh, some challenges and, and challenges and lessons. Um, yeah, that's it. So a little bit about NACO. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows NACO, yeah? we're an energy uh, company. Uh, we sell energy to customers, but we also produce energy, so that's important for our story. Um, and, uh, well, uh, our mission or our vision for the coming years is really that, that gr the, 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 green, uh, the green mission for us, One, pan one Planet Plan. Um, and uh, the three pillars in there, uh, for we want to help our customers become more green. We want to help, uh, we want to produce more uh, green energy, sustainable energy. But the third one is the most interesting for, for today, and that's we want to help optimize the system. Um, so we produce energy, and we also have other assets in the network, and it gives us the opportunity to actually uh, uh, help uh, optimize it for the grid, but also for, for customers. So that's, that's uh, 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 what I'm going to talk about. So it focuses more on that last, uh, last point. To start off, I have a two-minute video. Uh, um, that's to introduce the VPP, the virtual power plant uh, that we that we built. Um, uh, so uh, let me not explain it myself. I think the video does it much better than uh, than me. <laughs> so it's it's two minutes, so it should be uh, short. What is a virtual power plant? Er worden steeds meer wind- en zonneparken gebouwd. En steeds meer huishoudens en bedrijven maken gebruik van duurzame oplossingen... ...als zonnepanelen, warmtepompen en laadpalen. Hierdoor ontstaat er een steeds groter netwerk van kleine en grote duurzame assets... ...die allemaal zijn aangesloten op het stroomnet. Een positieve ontwikkeling, maar het brengt ook uitdagingen met zich mee. Vooral voor het in balans houden van het stroomnet. Nu zijn we nog vaak afhankelijk van gasgestookte energiecentrales om onbalans op het net op te vangen. Met een virtual power plant, ook wel VPP, kunnen we dit veranderen. 
Met de VPP voegen we al deze duurzame kleine en grote assets samen... tot als het ware één grote elektriciteitscentrale... waarbij we ze vanuit een centraal punt via slimme software kunnen aansturen... en efficiënter kunnen inzetten. Hoe werkt dat dan? Stel, een bedrijf heeft laadpalen en is aangesloten op de VPP. Dan kunnen we op momenten dat er veel duurzame stroom wordt opgewekt... de laadpalen aanzetten en ervoor zorgen dat de auto's worden opgeladen. Zo maken we efficiënt gebruik van de netcapaciteit. En andersom, op momenten dat er een stroomtekort is op het net... kan de VPP er in de nabije toekomst voor zorgen... dat de stroom in de accu's van elektrische auto's wordt teruggeleverd aan het net... en de auto-eigenaren hier een vergoeding voor krijgen. We zijn in staat om duizenden lokale duurzame assets aan te sluiten. Van wind- en zonneparken tot batterijen en elektrische boilers. Hiermee helpt een VPP onnodig fossiel energieverbruik terug te dringen wanneer het aanbod laag is... of om juist de belasting op het elektriciteitsnet te verlichten wanneer het aanbod hoog is. Zo speelt de VPP een belangrijke rol in het vormgeven van het toekomstige energiesysteem. Zo, so, een little commercial there. <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, this was actually an internal presentation or a video that uh, was is used in NACO to explain the VPP <coughs> to, to, to our people. I hope, I hope it was clear. Sorry, it was in Dutch, but there was some English subtitles, so I hope, uh, hope everybody could understand. Um, so uh, the VPP is not something that I built, but we as NACO uh, uh, built that. Um, and it's um, it, it hooks into the, 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 the big challenge that the energy market has, but we of course know a lot about uh, about unbalance on the network and about the capacity problems. And so, well, uh, I guess that this plays a role in, in that landscape as well. So what, what we do with that is we, uh, we steer and we get data from a lot of assets. And it all goes into this one system, this VPP system. And we use Kafka, use Kafka to feed that system with, with data and also to get, da uh, to, 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 to get uh, data out of it. Um, so it's, uh, it's about large assets, uh, but uh, VPP mostly is about the smaller assets, or you know, a wind park is not small, but it has a lot of small assets, uh, 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 turbines uh, included in it. So we have wind parks, wind, par uh, wind uh, 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 and solar parks and indeed as well. Uh, but also batteries, uh, e-boilers, all those kind of things are um, part of that uh, ecosystem. Um, and it means a lots of uh, lots of telemetry that we, uh, yeah, that we feed into that uh, that uh, VPP. Um, VPP is used for for steering, uh, uh, so that's that's like scheduled steering, but also real time steering. So, for example, when we get a, a, a question from Tenet saying, hey, we need you to uh, ramp down a little bit your production here and there, uh, then we, uh, we should be able to actually do that. Uh, it's, uh, we, we actually <coughs> participate in the AFRR uh, uh, curtailment uh, as an ECO. And, uh, well, that does mean we have to respond very quickly. So there's a real-time demand, uh, the real-time requirement for this as well. And of course, because of all that, uh, mission critical is uh, super in important. It needs to always be there, which is, which is of course, as we've seen already, uh, nearly impossible. But uh, um, uh, we need to uh, we need to deal with that. Well, besides VPP, there's a lot of other use cases as well that use uh, use Kafka at an echo. Um, uh, I will not go into all of. Them. One thing I wanted to mention is something that's also very uh, uh, recent. That's the 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 the, the uh, dynamic contract. So the dynamic pricing, so that you can, as a consumer, you can get a contract with NACO, other other parties saying, I want to have a dynamic contract, which means every hour the price of my energy will be different. Um, and uh, why is Kafka important in that scenario? Is uh, that also means that uh, the the calculation of those prices needs to happen continuously as well. So we actually feed this, this pricing engine that we have. We feed with uh, all the telemetry, all the, the market price information, that sort of thing. On, uh, uh, and and uh, they do this calculation uh, uh, on that. 
And it's a different scenario because it's not real time. It's uh, these prices are determined every day. But it is the same kind of data, so the telemetry, pricing data, things that are uh, also uh, important for that uh, use case. Um, so uh, these use cases, what they have in common is that, that well, feeding them data is one of the important, most important aspects. Sure. They, they only work if they get the right data. And, uh, um, and so it's more and more data we were seeing. Um, also was touched upon already by, by Jeroen. Uh, fast data with this, I mean, uh, uh, more real time. Uh, like indeed, uh, not every hour, but every second, or we don't do milliseconds at Ineco, but uh, uh, like, a, like a second or seconds, that's our, that's our uh, uh, d demand, our requirement in a lot of cases. Um, and more agile data, meaning that the, uh, the, the market is so, uh, so volatile, uh, business cases, they, uh, one, one day they're very valid and the next day they're not anymore because, for example, they decide to not, do the, uh, not change the truckleveren vergoeding, uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> then, then some use cases uh, you can throw out the window or delay a little bit, and others uh, you, need to, uh, you need to quickly uh, switch. So Agile is very important for us. And that means uh, being able to create new data products very quickly. You know, to, 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 uh, if you have all these nice systems that are relying on data, you need to be able to change that um, and not go through all kinds of, uh, yeah, well, of course, you need to ensure quality, but uh, you need to do it in a smart way. Um, so that's for us very important. Um, and, uh, um, one of the things that we also uh, uh, want to have at Ineco is we want to have this data available to potentially everybody within in the organization. Right? If you have like all this telemetry data, it should not be limited to only, for example, VVP. It should be uh, it should be possible to actually use that in other places if you have the rec uh, if you see a nice use case for it, a business case. You should be able to uh, to use it, and that's not only applications but also users themselves, that data scientists. We have a lot of data scientists that actually experiment a lot. They actually run models and, 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 uh, 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 on the data, and uh, they, uh, yeah, uh, uh, they also need to be able to find the data, use it, and uh, uh, um, do their stuff with it. So um, that brings me to this next picture. Uh, what, we are what we see as our vision is we want to have a well, a, a, an eco marketplace of data. And um, uh, uh, in one of your own slides, you have these three pillars of data, right? You have the slow data, the, 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 the batches, you have the APIs, and you have the streams. They're all, they're all th three different views on the same data a lot of times, right? Uh, we, have, uh, we have the data lake, Snowflake. We're using Snowflake at Eneco. Um we have, uh, well, lots of, lots of reports being generated out of that as well, but those are, they have a different, uh, a different user. Reports are, go, are more nice dashboards, and this is more like for anal analytics, for example. Uh, we have APIs. Uh, that's not only about actions, but it's also about retrieving data. For example, the website, right, the, the app, the Neko app. If you open, if you log in, you get all your data on the screen, all your usages. That's also just also the same data. And we have uh, streaming, uh, uh, of course, and uh, I know I, I use the term streaming uh, here. Um, um, we don't do stream processing uh, uh, centrally. Um, so it's about making the data available through, uh, through Kafka topics. And we want to have that all, we want to have one common view on top of all that data, ideally where we have one catalog and, and people can go through, I want this data, and they can say, oh, I have this on Kafka, and I have this, this table here in the data lake I could use. Right, that would be an ideal picture for us. Um, but uh, traditionally in the data landscape, if you talk about data platforms, um, those two aspects on the right, those more integration-related data products, are usually kept out of the loop, uh, um, and we want to bring it all together. Um, and that, that's, that's, that's one of the important things that you want to do. 
Um, so what does it mean for integration? Um, there's some, re some requirements, right? So let, let's go into that uh, uh, quickly. Um, the user base is quite diverse. So if you have a data product, be it a table or an API, completely different users. So you want to have a marketplace where, uh, where you can have developers looking for their stuff, your business users, really non, uh, yeah, uh, uh, like power users uh, as well, data scientists, data engineers, lots of things. Also, the type of applications is, of course, very, uh, very diverse. Um, and also, there are, multi there are multiple ways of getting the data. You have uh, queries, you have API calls, you have uh, Kafka consumers, uh, uh, all kinds of things. Um, that's important to have. It needs to be easy, made easy. We are, uh, I'm part of a platform team, so that means we, um, we try to help teams. Uh, it's an enabling team uh, uh, in, in, in actual terms. Um, but uh, uh, in the end, the DevOps teams and the, the scientists, et cetera, et cetera, they need to be able to do it themselves. So uh, it should be possible to make easy. Fast time to market is important for us as well. Uh, we recently uh, uh, have a renewed focus on, uh, on digital products and uh, uh, um, with a lot of uh, emphasis on, uh, on time to market of new, new, uh, new, new initiatives. Um, also means experimentation. So uh, not only data scientists, but also IT teams need, be need to be able to test something, build something quickly, see if it works. Um, and if it doesn't work, fine, throw it away. If it does work, uh, productionize it. Um, so there needs to be a lot of room for that as well. Um, and, uh, but of course, uh, uh, as uh, an integration guy, uh, yeah, it needs to all be of the right quality and it needs to be well managed. The authorization needs to be managed. The quality needs to be managed. Things like privacy, GDPR, uh, also important. Um, so that, that's, that's a little bit conflicting, right? But that makes it very interesting as well. So um, coming to the uh, platform. So we are a platform organization at the NACO now, uh, uh, meaning we, uh, we, have, uh, we try to uh, provide shared platforms in infrastructure, but also in the area of integration. Uh, for example, API management platform and also this, uh, this Kafka platform. Uh, the four pillars of that is it needs to be self-service. Well, that, that's also one of the reasons why uh, actual is, uh, is a good fit for us. Um, um, it needs to be adaptable, uh, scalable, uh, optimized. Those are, the, those are the pillars that we find important. Uh, you don't get it out of the box. You have to work hard uh, to, to, to get it, for example, to get processes optimized. It's quite, uh, governance aspects are quite uh, complex sometimes. Uh, for example, one of the questions earlier was, uh, okay, uh, creating a topic, right? Uh, how about four eyes? How, how do you approve it? How do you make sure it, it's, 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 it's correctly defined or makes sense? That's, those are also questions that we are struggling with. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, that 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 well, that that, that uh, 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 I'll come back to that later. Is one also also one of the lessons learned and and the, the challenges ahead. So a little bit about the history, the recent history uh, of integration um, uh, uh, from uh, before we started with Kafka. And uh, we were uh, 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 an organization with, uh, with, with a centralized integration team. And uh, we also built all the integrations, all the application integration stuff centrally. Uh, we, uh, we had uh, products like Tipco, Tipco Business Works, uh, also some messaging platforms, and it was all centrally managed and centrally uh, implemented. Um, then uh, we switched to, to API management as, as, a, as a core uh, integration uh, uh, way of integrating. 
So uh, um, we switched from Tivco to Epigee uh, during that time. Um, and we also made a move, uh, um, let's go back um, around that time from that central uh, mechani uh, way of working to a more federated way of working. So making the teams themselves responsible for their stuff. Uh, but with guardrails, with some rules in place, etc. cetera. Um, uh, so around 2019, uh, we got some new use cases popping up uh, around IoT, like at VPP was uh, becoming more interesting to look at. Uh, we had uh, uh, some other use cases as well. So uh, we, needed, we needed a streaming platform, um, a messaging platform uh, c suitable for, for high volume, high speed as well. So we introduced Kafka during that time, uh, and uh, that's when we started with Actual. And, uh, uh, it seems like yesterday, but it's uh, indeed uh, five years ago. <laughs> um, um, a couple of years later, we, uh, um, uh, we, we were still in a time where everything was, uh, almost everything was API, API-based at the NACO. And, uh, but uh, we've seen some, uh, some downsides to that as well. Uh, uh, there's a very big reason why, why you have messaging. Uh, and we forgot a little bit about that asynchronous is, uh, is a good thing to have sometimes. Um, and we uh, luckily had Kafka on board as well. So, uh, uh, so we, went, uh, we, we got a renewed focus on, on more loosely coupled integration. So event-driven, not per se event-driven, because event, you know, uh, I always look at event-driven as really event-based, right? A lot of, but a lot of messaging is still messaging. It's not really about events per se, uh, from a uh, conceptual uh, perspective. But um, that's another you know, discussion that we can have sometime. Um, uh, so uh, a couple of years later, we had, uh, well, we were in the meantime, we were working on VPP a lot, right, uh, hard, and VPP went live, uh, I think it was uh, last year somewhere. Uh, I'm not 100% sure about the date. Um, and uh, we, we also made a move because we had Kafka running, the actual platform we have running on, uh, uh, on our business critical Azure cloud. Um, um, and we, uh, we, of course, we have this mission critical requirement, so we need, uh, we need a better way to, to, uh, uh, to manage that. So uh, we, ch we, we uh, well, it's still Azure, but we moved to a different, uh, different subscription in Azure with a different uh, maintenance party. That are more that were more capable of managing it in a mission critical fashion. So that was a big migration we did last year. Uh, we finished it this year. Uh, yeah, we finished it in uh, 2023. Um, and uh, I could probably talk a couple of hours about how that migration went and what we did and uh, what worked well and what didn't. But uh, uh, it was very interesting. Um, and it actually went uh, very smoothly in the end for the end users. I don't think uh, there was hardly any uh, any incidents with uh, with applications switching over was uh, really easy. We did it also during a longer period, right? We made a maybe a little bit of detail. Uh, I'm a bit going off topic here, but um, we had uh, we actually set up uh, a parallel set of clusters of Kafka. And we had distribution going uh, uh, between the old environment and the new environment in such a way that regardless where a message was produced, you would have it on the other side as well. And also things like offsets were managed properly, so we <coughs> could have applications be, if the either producers or consumers just switch over at any point in time in their own schedule during that uh, transition period. And it was a very big enabler to actually, to make this migration manageable. Otherwise it would have been like a big bang kind of thing and that would be, uh, be terrible. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, yeah, and where are we now with 2024? Um, well, data maturity, the data data governance has become more important at the NACO. We actually have a, uh, uh, a program running about data maturity as well. Um, that's that's a whole that's a complete broader scope than what I'm talking about here. That's on all levels, but we need to fit into that 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 way of thinking. Uh, as well, and uh, we have a lot of work to do on self-service capabilities, um, and uh, more about that later. 
So where are we now? Um, uh, some, 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 some numbers here. Uh, we're not huge. We have about th uh, 300 uh, topics, uh, 200 applications registered in the portal. Uh, we also have Kafka, Kafka Connect, so we have about 60 connectors running as well. Uh, we have uh, 220 uh, users that, that uh, use the portal, the self-service portal. Um, the amount of teams is about 50. And we have uh, uh, yeah, a little over <coughs> 100 million uh, messages a day now. But uh, with VPP also ramping up, right, getting more and more assets on board, this will this will grow a lot. I expect that uh, that that yeah that that we will have a lot more telemetry going over the system in the in the, in the coming year. The granularity of the that telemetry will also be smaller, right? Before it was every 15 minutes, for example, in measurement uh, sensor reading, but now they're going to more like uh, uh, four or five seconds or so, I believe. So that will also have a lot of impact. Um, so let's see. And also we're going international with VPP as well. Um, and also with Hill and Echo, right? Because uh, we also in the, uh, we have Licht Leek in Germany uh, and Belgium we have an Echo. So uh, we need to internationalize all the solutions that we have. And that will also bring more load, of course. Um, yeah, a little bit uh, under the hood then. Uh, we can talk a little bit about that. Um, I already uh, mentioned that we have uh, Azure, but we also have an on-premise cluster as well. Um, at Eneco, we have uh, some applications running on uh, on-premise in a managed data center. Um, and why? Well, because of legacy applications and because some things we don't want in the cloud. Um, but they also have a, have a, have a Kafka uh, requirement. Uh, that they also want to be able to, to, to use that data to, to interact with uh, the things that are running in Azure. So we have two clusters. And they're connected to each other. We have a distributor running, uh, and that keeps them in sync both ways. Um, uh, the, whole, the whole setup is uh, as a mission-critical SLA, so 24-7, etc. cetera, uh, short response times. I don't have exact measurements about the uptime yet, the availability numbers. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, it, uh, the, the goal is to, to, to be in the, the four nines. <laughs> uh, but uh, of course, that's pretty difficult. Um, uh, so the clusters are not that big, three nodes. Uh, uh, but still so very sufficient for our use case, for our load. Actually, we, yeah, we haven't run into any performance issues yet. Of course, at some point uh, we may need to scale, but uh, yeah, so far, so far, so good. Um, other things that we have, uh, Kafka Connect, I al already mentioned earlier. Uh, it was an important component for us to get on board. In the beginning, we didn't have it yet. Uh, uh, only after two years or so, uh, the, the, the platform uh, had uh, support for Kafka Connect. I'm not 100% sure, but it was a big enabler for us to, to actually make that uh, uh, make it easy to onboard new uh, new new applications, new new uh, uh, new applications on on the on the uh, on the platform. Um, because Kafka, not, not everybody, everything talks Kafka. That's uh <laughs> that, yeah, that's just how it is. REST proxy also another component that was very. Uh, uh uh, uh, good for us to have, also because of that same reason. Um, I don't know if there's people here in the audience that also use the REST proxy uh, currently. No, good. Um, well, the, the, the interesting part, challenges and lessons. Any questions so far, by the way? Okay, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's go through them. Ah, okay, sorry, yeah. Yeah. What kind of data do you think of, or how do you manage that? Is it still protected in the open? Uh, uh, yes, uh, but the uh, the data that is put on the cluster on prem is uh, is okay to be shared with uh, so uh, with with the non on prem uh, uh, cluster. So it's not like it needs to be uh, completely isolated that data. So we have a completely 100% shared. 
virtual cluster, so to speak, with two locations. If, there's co if there comes a use case where the data needs, needs to really be local, on-prem only, then we would change that. Uh, but at the moment, it's uh, completely synchronized, 100%. Mm -hmm. And how do you tackle that? Because it's quite relatively new. They only have two years uh, to Yeah, four, four and a half years. How yeah. do you tackle that uh, to adapt and uh, people and process? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I will, uh, I will go into that as one of the lessons. And uh, still, it, may, it remains a challenge, but uh, I think we can, uh, we can uh, discuss that uh, at that slide. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, we can go into it a little bit now. Uh, I don't have any other uh, uh, slide for that. Um, what we are, the, the portal is, is nice to have, right? It allows you to actually do a lot of stuff. But we feel it's a little bit, uh, yeah, uh, we are also not on the latest version. That's also something I need to mention. But there's, there's, lack in, there's some lack in visibility there. So you know, on the self-service, I, I also mean that teams should be able to not only create topics or manage access, but also see what's <coughs> happening. So uh, they should be fully in control of their data flows. Um, there's some capabilities missing there. Uh, the newer and newer versions, we, uh, the, uh, you, can, you can actually see the some, uh, some, some metrics about the data flow. Um, uh, and also the consumer lag is very important for us. So th I'm happy that's coming. Uh, um, uh, but uh, that, that's one part. And the other part is regarding uh, more governance and control. Um, um, at the moment, we feel that the self-service portal is a little bit of everything or nothing. So either you can do everything or you can do nothing. Uh, we want to have a lack of sort of middle ground where, uh, um, so for example, that you can request a topic, somebody reviews it, approve it, approves it, and it gets created, right? So th those sort of workflows we want to have. Um, we did a similar thing with schema. So we have a whole schema pipeline and review process that works fine, but we need to extend it to also other things. So the whole onboarding part, we can more ma uh, optimize better. Um, uh, so we're still thinking about how we're going to do that. Um, um, we are also thinking about integrating it with other tooling that we have at Eneco, because we have a data management platform as well. Um, and if we want to be part of that same data landscape, maybe it's best to also integrate with that, so that you, for example, have your data stewards and owners actually deciding who gets access to a topic instead of a DevOps team. Um, so those are some aspects that we are thinking about. Yeah. Does it uh, answer yeah. your question? Yeah. Uh, they, uh, uh, well, they do keep data, but in VPP itself is not long term. We also offload all the data to Snowflake. Oh. <coughs> so um, everything, well, <laughs> not everything, but uh, uh, one of the patterns that is uh, very useful, and if we're talking about multimodal uh, uh, data, is the same data you have on the stream, why not also have it in the Snowflake, in the data lake as well, for analytics later on. So. A lot of the time, we just uh, uh, automatically, uh, when there's a talk, we actually also create a connector that, that loads that data into the Snowflake uh, uh, data lake. That's part two of the question, okay, yeah. Uh, how do we manage those different roles? Well, we are not, uh, we don't maintain the platform technically. So that's, that's one, one aspect. So we, uh, we have a partner for that and they keep it running. So that, that's very good that we have that. We don't have to worry about it. 
of course, we have a functional maintenance role. We are in touch with them on incidents and, and things like that, improvements. Uh, um, and for the rest, uh, the rest of the time that we are not a very big team, maybe I should have mentioned, we are, uh, and we also share multiple platforms. So we have uh, about four and a half FTE, uh, and we manage three platforms. So uh, API management, uh, this, and also uh, identity access management for customers. So we, we, are very, we, we are quite limited, so we could use more people. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure, especially for all the questions that we get, because that's we uh, we need to help uh, uh, teams, <coughs> and that's one of the next slides as well. Uh, without that, the adoption goes down. Um, um, so let's come back to that that part later. And then about the offloading, there's also a question about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All no, not all. It's it's uh, on request. So if, uh, if, uh, if a team comes to us, say we need a topic, oh, and, and we want to have that data in Snowflake as well, then we do it like that. Yeah. Does that answer that? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Uh, going back to the standard of management. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you see in the future? What, what extra uh, functionality do you want? And you said I'm not talking about the pipeline to, to uh, make it in workflows and distribution. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's about uh, it's about how users use Kafka, uh, about uh, uh, about what kind of because self service means you enable others to do their work, but you also need to provide a process for them. And um, and because uh, one of the other slides we had the data uh, maturity uh, thing on there. At Eneco, we're trying to get, uh, we're, we're having a lot more focus now on all the processes around data. Uh, we want to have, uh, uh, the, for example, the, um, uh, the authorization on who can consume from a topic. We want to have that authorization, that, 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 that stamp, come from somebody who, who actually is assigned as an owner of that data from a business perspective, um, ideally. Um, so, uh, that that is uh, not not uh, uh, so. That means that every organization is different, of course. Eh? But means that we need to be able to tweak the process um, in some ways, and uh, yeah, uh, and maybe we can work on uh, things that to, to do in self-service, improve some some aspects of it. But <coughs> it could also mean that we need to have some external processes, for example, through. Service now, or through a data management uh, uh, governance system, uh, other other tools that we may need to use. We're we're uh, we're really much into a thinking phase on that at the moment, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, we we really foresee that we uh, will we have a lot of optimization that we can do, because now it's all best effort a little bit. You know, if somebody asks, I need access to that topic. So the other team approves it, but that's a developer approving access to production for another team. Is that the right thing to do, right? Uh, those those kind of things are, uh, are uh, on my mind. Uh, it feel it feels a bit um, tricky. Yeah, but <laughs> you, you, you put that into the, into the actual uh, uh, governance there. It yeah. would probably be quite a big change for them. Yeah. And yeah. you have all kinds of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot, yeah. Yeah. There are lots of options. Um, so, uh, um, we do use CICD, uh, by the way. A very uh, uh, we use it to manage connectors. So we have all the connectors we have in code. So all the configuration of connectors we manage ourselves. We don't let the teams themselves do it, but we manage it for them. But we have a code repository, and everything is managed by code. So uh, uh, it's possible to do it, do it like that, right? To, to have processes around that. Uh, but of course, if you look at the data governance in a broader scope, and you have like these business data stewards that needs to do something, well, they're not going into Git to do th something, right? So you need to have something else for that. So it's it, it's a lot of thinking that we still have to do.
Um, anything else at the moment? No? Then uh, let's go on. Challenges and lessons. Um, yeah, that's, that's of course a learning curve on the multiple levels. Uh, uh, NACO is a diverse organization. Uh, we have, uh, um, uh, of course, we have DevOps teams that are very, uh, very, very, yeah, very, very good, good programmers. Uh, we, have, uh, we have a Java uh, a a team that's good in Java, but we have also a lot of teams that are more like uh, using, using low-code tools. We have uh, 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 .NET teams. Uh, we have uh, quite yeah, the Python uh, uh, <coughs> people. Uh, lots of lots of uh, uh, lots of different uh, uh, teams and with lots of different skill levels as well. Um, so there's a learning curve there. Uh, Kafka was especially 2019 when we started. There was one team who knew about Kafka and the rest didn't never heard about Kafka. So. Uh, you have to explain, okay, it's what messaging. It works like JMS, but it's different. And uh, you need uh, and, and you need to, uh, uh, yeah, we need to help them a lot. Um, um, and if you show them that it's not difficult at all, uh, that it's just a different, different library you need to use, uh, some different uh, uh, things you need to uh, worry about, then it's not that, uh, not that uh, uh, difficult. Um, but it means a lot of coaching. Um, uh, and it really depends on the team what they need. So it's about consulting, right? It's about understanding <coughs> what, the, what, the, what the issue is, whether what they're running into, uh, do they lack skills or do they not understand or, or do they just need a little bit of uh, help in some specific area? Can be, uh, can, be, can be anything. So what we did at the NACO is we said, okay, we just go out there and, and help people. <laughs> very simple, and we also provide uh, some resources for that. Um, so, for example, we have uh, some Git uh, repos with examples. We have, we have for every language that we have, uh, .NET, Java, uh, 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 Node, uh, Python, we have an example repository with, with some, some examples in there. That's already a quick start for a lot of people, and, and, and for a lot of people, just enough to get them start uh, to, 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 to for the rest that they can deal with it themselves. Um, documentation as well, uh, of course, but uh, those examples I think work uh, work best. Um, we're also working on uh, uh, describing the patterns. So what we what we try to do is identify standard ways of doing things. Uh, for example, that Snowflake integration, that's, that's one way of doing it. We're not, not going to uh, implement other ways of doing it. Um, um, and we want to describe those, make, uh, make, make it clear for everybody that this is the way to do, uh, do a specific thing. Um, for example, what we need to invest some time in the next, next year is, for example, creating a pattern around how to use Azure Functions together with Kafka. Uh, it's quite tricky, uh, uh, so we need to figure out uh, what, what the best way is. There are some teams that already have experience now, they, uh, they, and we need to harvest that knowledge and uh, make it into a pattern somehow. Um, so that, that, that's the, the things that we did, um, and uh, yeah, it takes time, and not every team is the same. Uh, you also have politics involved, so it, uh, uh, um, uh, having consulting skills helps, uh, helps a lot. <laughs> um, um, yeah, the other thing that we ran into is uh, it's not ubiquitous, uh, um, meaning it's not like, not every tool application talks Kafka. At least most of them don't. Um, it's not like HTTP that you can just uh, expect uh, to have some way of implementing this. Um, so that, 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 that is still a challenge, um, especially uh, um, if you're talking about low-code platforms, for example. Uh, we have out systems in use at Teneco. We have uh, Azure, Azure integration services like uh, um, Azure Functions, but also uh, Logic Apps, uh, things like that. We have other tools, low-code tools, um, low-code integration 
tools like more like pass solutions from SAP, for example, or cloud platform integration also have. So pretty diverse, but all those things have in common that they natively don't really talk Kafka. Uh, so that needs, uh, needs some flexibility. Um, and that brings me back to the previous slide is patterns, right? For each tool, for each environment, <coughs> think of a standard way of integrating the two, two landscapes and, st and uh, just perfect that and, and reuse that every time. For example, with um, out systems, well, they, they, they don't have uh, a real Kafka connector. So if they want to receive data, we decide, okay, let them implement an uh, HTTP API and we will push the data there. That's a pattern that we are using, uh, that, that the HTTP connector comes into play there. So uh, the other way around, well, that's more a bit tricky. Um, um, there could be multiple ways. We don't have it, but it could either be the REST proxy. It doesn't really scale very well. Uh, it could also be like, a, like an in-between step, for example, have them push data to an Azure event hubs thing and that we can integrate that into the Kafka. So it's, it takes some puzzling. Sometimes, um, and uh, you know, we had, a, we had a really big help from actual, uh, especially in the early the beginning years, to to help with these challenges. Right, to, a couple of connectors came out of it, like the JM, we have a JMS connector that we uh, wanted to use, and you validated that it was working. HTTP connector was built uh, uh, for uh, also for that purpose. Uh, what other things, uh, the Kafka to Kafka connector as well to integrate with uh, Azure Event Hubs. So those things, uh, so thanks a lot for all the help uh, for with that uh, part, uh, I'd say. I saw a question there in the corner. Yeah, I don't have a slide, but it's a good question. Um, we standardize, in the beginning we said, oh, let's do everything Avro. That's also mm, not feasible. Um, not everybody, uh, uh, not every language, every tool has Avro capabilities. So we, are, we, we decided on just giving two options, JSON and Avro. Let the data producer choose what they want to use and demand some flexibility from the consumer side. Because, yeah, it would be nice if you have one uniform data format, but that's just not how things work, unfortunately. Yeah. So, but we need to limit those choices, right? You want to limit, okay, let's Avro or JSON. And if it's JSON, make sure that you also define that message format well. In Avro, you get it for free. You have to define a schema. For JSON, you can decide, okay, let's just uh, send some JSON data. But you have to, we, de we demand that they actually formalize it in a JSON schema and put it in a repository so that they actually are documented. So, um, uh, so yeah, that, that's what we do. For Avro, yes. Uh, for, J for JSON, we strongly encourage and most of the time it works. So there's, uh, uh, there's one team who has some things running that are not well documented, or not documented well enough. But uh, yes, it's just a process. We, we put down, we say this is how we want to work. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, I think, I think teams do see the value of that because you know it's a contract, it's a data contract. So why not have that formalized? I, I cannot think of any reason why it would not be a good idea to formalize it uh, <laughs> so that yeah that that uh, so it but it takes takes convincing sometimes yeah um, but in Kafka world, yeah, in the, the client is in charge of a lot of things. Of, uh, most of the things, the client is in charge. So it's what they can do matters. Uh, if they can't do a certain thing, it would be a very, I think it would be a bad idea to jump through hoops as a central platform to actually make 
get work somehow. Um, that, that's a little bit fragile uh, a way of working, I think. So you need to, uh, you need to, you need to find a balance, I guess, uh, like, uh, like in a lot of things. Um, um, you need to make it easy for them. You need to put their responsibility to the, uh, at the right spot. So, uh, so the clients need to be responsible. And um, uh, um, yeah, uh, and, and if you have an environment where everybody can talk Avro, that's, that would be perfect. But for us, that's, uh, that's not really feasible. Yeah, yeah let's, uh, shall we continue, next one? Um, about this one, uh, some last points. Um, so yeah, it's, it's about um, uh, that Kafka is not, not a, well, it's not, maybe not, it's not a standard yet in the sense that HTTP uh, is. So what we try, well, what the only thing we can do is manage expectations and really put a lot of time in, in, in creating those patterns those standards ways of working and invest together with actual if need be, uh, figure things out ourselves, the uh, best way of working, or ask the teams to, uh, to, to actually work together to actually make it work and, and, and to harvest that as knowledge for the next team that want to, want to do it in the same way. So that's, um, that's about that. Um, uh, something a little bit about asynchronous and, and, and event driven and that um, Somehow, it's still uh, sometimes a difficult switch to make for teams. To think, uh, to, to step away from, I make a call and I get a response to, I just send data, I publish data. Um, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, they have to start thinking the other way around a little bit. Um, they have to get used to the fact that they don't get a confirmation from the other side, even though they don't need it. They actually are used to actually get uh, some feedback from the other side, even though it's just an accepted message, right? Um, so uh, uh, that that that's a little bit weird for 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 some teams. So, um, we do see that, you know, it, it's 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 a sort of like a mind switch. If you get like the, the architects, the main architect, solution architects, they all know this concept of asynchronous communication, event-driven uh, architecture, and most of them that there's a big value uh, uh, to those uh, uh, things. So um, just need some time to, to, to make that switch. I think in the end uh, um, it, it, it's possible to do. Um, but of course not everything needs to be asynchronous. So we still have a lot of use cases where, uh, uh, where, where an API is what you need. That's just how it, yeah, it's just how it works. And, uh, so also not try to squeeze everything into an asynchronous pattern. Uh, sometimes it's a bad choice. Uh, um, and yeah, I, 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 I know some architects who make the bold decision, everything needs to be asynchronous. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, that's, uh, that, that's not gonna fly, uh, I'm afraid. Um, next one. Um, uh, also touching upon asynchronous uh, and, and Kafka, um, we struggle with observa observability of the of the chain. Um, um, you know, if you have a complete synchronous uh, chain of interactions between systems, it's very easy to pinpoint where something went wrong. And if it's asynchronous, it's not that visible automatically. Um, uh, one of the main goals for, well, for the IT uh, department at the uh, uh, NACO is uh, to actually look at this and, and look, uh, look uh, they take a top level approach, right? look from the top down, look at the whole chain, for example the VPP, and see what we need to monitor there to actually ensure that uh, the platform functions technically as it's supposed to be functioning. Um, for example, message produced there, um, does the other party actually produce, uh, consume it or not, right? Uh, you can monitor the lags and see if some, there's some, some delay somewhere, but from a functional perspective, you also need to have some, some monitoring there. Um, so this is, um, so, so you do lo lose observability, the visibility of the chain if you go asyn asynchronous, um, 
and that's not, not bad, but it may mean you need to invest in some extra tooling or extra, uh, extra things to, 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 to compensate. So for example, we're looking at, uh, at some, uh, uh, some monitoring tooling. Uh, I forgot the name. But uh, it, allows, it would allow us to actually take that top view and, and, and see where the things are like failing. Um, so, uh, and also another one is uh, more about the, 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 the functionality and about the, 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 the change of pace is that uh, if you have all these processes and ways of working, they need, to, they need to make sure that they also work in a fast moving environment. So if you have a team that says, I want to do an experiment, I want to change, I want to create this topic with this data schema, and I want to send that data to Snowflake, that you, need, that you are able to do that uh, quickly, quickly enough. Um, so that, yeah, that means that you have to, uh, you have to, uh, have to account for that. Um, it's not enough anymore that you say, oh, let's say, uh, uh, I have uh, created a ticket in service now and uh, the resolution time is two weeks and then you will have it. That's, the, 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 that's not, not gonna fly anymore. So that's important. Um, and, um, and that's about IT stuff, right? Connectivity and things that, 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 that uh, speaks for itself, but also about changes to data contracts, for example. Um, uh, yeah, that, that we want to the, the teams themselves to be in charge of this process, the data contracts, because we cannot afford to have a, have a delay in that, that aspect. So if they want to add a field, that should be like it should be there the next day. Uh, uh, if uh, um, of course we have a review process, we have a pipeline, so we automated a lot of this stuff around data contracts and about the AVO schemas uh, specifically about uh, the, the validation of those, the review and the deployment of those to the platform. Um, and that's that's exactly what you need: this automation and this process to uh, to make to make it work in our view. Um, um, so specifically for, for AVO schemas and also JSON schemas and those contracts is you need to make sure that the process is uh, clear. Um, of course, you need to enable fast change, but you also need to observe that things don't break easily. Means that you want to have uh, this compatibility expectations very clear, saying you can add a field, but please remove a field because then something breaks or you know, change the type of a field or something like that. And we have mechanisms in place to actually validate that in the pipelines, in the CI CD, that, that, er, that that's all uh, covered. Um, so that, that's, that's how we do that. Uh, yes, do hands, uh, you were first. <laughs> yeah, so maybe, uh, data contract is the definition of the data that goes over your topic. And uh, in AVO, that's very clear, it's AVO schema. Is that more data um, and, uh, it's, it's more like a tech, it's a technical contract schema. Uh, I, I'm not, not talking about the agreements that could be around that as well, or regarding quality so or... Yeah, so, uh, but uh, indeed a contract can be broader, can be sort of broader than just a technical, uh, technical contract. Um, uh, yeah, we, we know the concept, uh, but we have a layered approach there. So we have uh, an enterprise level data uh, governance uh, 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 um <coughs> team that, that, def that uh, or try to organize those canonical uh, models, but more on a uh, abstract level. And then we, uh, we try, uh, what we try to do is have each domain, each business domain, translate that into their own, their own d uh, data models. Um, and those could be down to the technical level. Um, so that's, that's a concept. But it's, uh, we, we, yeah, it's, it's very easy to, to, to throw a lot of resources at uh, data modeling and uh, 
managing CDMs, uh, we don't have those resources. <laughs> so we try to uh, make the domains themselves responsible mm -hmm. and we, um, we actually do review that to the extent that we can, that at least they're consistent. That's what we uh, that's what I try to do. Yeah. Uh, two slides. <laughs> and that depending on the questions, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, it all depends on the questions that I get. <laughs> so la last last uh, challenge lesson uh, about ownership and governance. Um, uh, this is more like conceptual thing about about data uh, uh, maturity, about who does what. Um, uh, from um, we see a lot of roles. Uh, so we have DevOps teams, uh, the technical guys, the architects, the, but also the, the operators. So the more the, the ops guys uh, as well. Uh, we see uh, data stewards, data owners, more from the business side. They want to have a stake. They want to have uh, also be part of the process. That's that's quite a puzzle to 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 to, to manage and to make work in a process. Um, for, exa for example, there's also something to be said. For example, for the old-fashioned way of doing things, saying a developer never makes a change in his production and can't see production data. Uh, that's quite that. that that's quite difficult to, 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 to do. Um, um, and uh, well, that, that's something we, we don't have a solution for yet. So, but those are, those are the type of things, challenges that, uh, that pop up. Um, and um, yeah, I, I'm curious to, to hear about you if you see the same challenges or not, <laughs> and whether you have solutions, but... Uh, um, uh, we are, we, it's still a work in progress for us. Um, uh, of course, we have ideas and we have the data maturity program that we are, well, I see it as we are forced to actually follow that, those processes that come out of that. Uh, I see it as a good thing. Um, but that could mean that, you know, it could have impact on what developers could do or what, what kind of uh, things they can and yeah cannot do uh, um, um, and that that's yeah that, that let, let's see let's see what comes out of that that's actually my last uh, slide um, any more questions at this point no good then uh, it's lunch time thank you for uh, attention and all the good questions